Okay, let's go on to chapter two. Let's see how we're doing time wise here. Eight minutes in, got through one chapter. We're on we're on a good pace here. Okay, chapter two. Um, we learned midpoint, length, medians, right bisectors, circles. Let's find out what all of those are. Okay, first of all, midpoint. If we want to find the midpoint of a line, we'll figure out we could do that. Um, the midpoint of a line, if we take half of the run um, and half of the rise, that gets us to our midpoint, okay? So half of the run, um, the run is x1 plus x2, okay, that's how we, that's how we got to it. So we take half of it, find um, the average of the run. So to find the average of the run, what we do is we add the x-coordinates and divide by 2, okay? That's how we find the average of the run. Okay? That's how we go to half of it. We want to find the average of the rise. Okay, we add the y coordinates and divide by two to find the average of the y coordinates. Okay, that's how we figured out um, how to find the midpoint. So if I want to find the middle of AB here, what I need to do, so I have an x1, a y1, x2, y2. I'll label those just um, quickly, x2, so you can see where we put this stuff into the equation. Okay, we, I put these into our equation here, I can find the midpoint. So if I want the middle of AB, I have to find the average of the x coordinates. So, mid of AB, find the average of the x coordinates. How I do that is I add them. 3 plus 5 is 8, and I divide them by 2. I also need to find the average of the y coordinates. Okay? So, I need to find halfway uh, of the rise. So, I add the y coordinates and divide by 2. So, that gives me 9 plus 7 is 20. Divide that by 2. So, my midpoint, 8 divided by 2 is 4. 20 by 2 is 10. Midpoint is 4, 10. Let's do this next one even quicker. So the mid of this point, I need to find the average of the x-coordinate and the y-coordinates, okay? To find me the middle, 5 plus 6 is 11, divide that by 2. 1 plus 0 is 1, divide that by 2. There's my, there's my midpoint. Um, and that's in lowest terms. I can't simplify any further. I'm good. All right. We remember length as well. To find the length of a line segment, we made it into a right angle triangle. Okay, and I remember from Pythagorean's theorem that it, the square, if you add the squares of the legs, that's equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Um, so um, here's the run, okay? Um, the difference in that, the change in X is the run, the change in Y is the rise. So my run squared plus my rise squared is equal to my hypotenuse squared. That means that the length of this line, okay, the hypotenuse here, is equal to the square root of the run squared plus the rise squared. Here's my length equation. That's how we got it. But can we use it? Let's find out. Here's my x1. Here's my y1. Here's my x2. Here's my y2. Put them into the equation and see what we get. So the length of this line, AB here. So the length is equal to the square root. x2 minus x1. 4 minus negative 3 is 7 squared. Plus y2 minus y1 squared. 5 minus 1 is 4 squared. So this is equal to 40, square root of 49 plus 16. Okay, and that gives me square root of 65, which is about 8.1, I believe. Oh, what happened here? Square root, oh, I'm losing valuable time. Square root 65 equals 8.1. Awesome. Okay, so let me just double check. That's right, yeah, 8.1, that's good. Okay, um, find the length of the line with endpoints 5, 7, 1, negative 1. Well, I can just, I know this is my x1, y1, that's my x2, y2. Plug it into my length equation. Okay, I'm going to do this one even quicker. x2 minus x1, 1 minus 5, negative 4, squared is 16. y2 minus y1, so I add y2 minus y1 squared. That's my rise. Okay, so I do my rise squared, negative 1 minus 7 is negative 8, squared 64. Good. So that gives me square root of 80, which is almost 9, um, 8.9. Okay, awesome. There's my length of that line. Next. Okay, medians and right bisectors, these might take a little bit longer. Um, if you need a refresher on this, pause the video, read these steps before I start going through the solution. I'll reference them now, okay? If I want to find a median um, from vertex A for this triangle ABC, so I've got my triangle here, triangle A, B, C. 4, 4 is A, B is negative 6, 2. Uh, I should have drawn this triangle before I started the video. I'm losing time. That's okay, we'll get through it. Okay, um, I have triangle ABC. I know the definition of a median it, it, from a vertex. Um, it's the line that goes from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So I need the equation of this line right here. I need the equation of that line in y equals mx plus b form. Okay, so first thing I need to do, I need the equation of this line. Um, I'm going to need the slope of it. I need, I need it in y equals mx plus b. 
Okay, so I need the slope and the y-intercept. In order to figure out the slope, I need two points on that line. So I need to figure out the midpoint here. I, I'm going to call that D. I need to figure out the midpoint of BC um, in order to find the slope. So midpoint of BC, mid of BC, I know how to do that. It's just equal to um, the average of the x-coordinates and, and the average of the y-coordinates. Okay, so negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4, divided by 2 is negative 2. Average of the y-coordinates, 2 plus 0 divided by 2 is 1. There you go, I have the midpoint of BC. It's negative 2, 1. Okay, now I need the slope of AD. Slope of AD, slope of AD, I can find that. Slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I remember that from grade 9. That's no problem. I like using that equation. Okay, so I can go ahead and um, find out the slope of AD. y2 minus y1, 4 minus 1 is 3. x2 minus x1, 4 minus negative 2 is 6. That simplified is 1 over 2. Okay, I now have the slope of this line. So I know um, I want to write in y equals mx plus b. I know the slope is a half. I just don't know the y-intercept yet. I can solve that though. I know a point on the line. Um, this point right here is on that line. Okay. Um, so is point A. So I can use point A or D to plug in for x and y. I'm going to use this point here. Um, I know that's on my line. So y, here's my x and my y. Plug in 1 for y. Plug in negative 2 for x. And go ahead and simplify. Solve for b. 1 equals negative 2 plus b. Uh, sorry, negative 2 over 2 plus b, which is negative 1 plus b. Um, move the negative 1 to the other side. I figure out that b is equal to 2. And I can write my equation. I have my slope and y y-intercept. y equals 1 over 2x plus 2. There's my equation. In my final equation, I don't plug in for x and y, just the slope and the y-intercept. Awesome, that's how I find the median of a triangle. Well, now let's find the right bisector of a line. I know the right bisector of a line is a line that is per, that bisects a line um, at a right angle. Okay, so if I have line a, a, B, the right bisector of A, B is the line that bisects A, B, goes to the midpoint at a right angle. Okay, so in order to find the equation of that line right there, so I have this line here, A, B, wow, that's a nice straight line, awesome. A, B, that's point one, four, that's point three, negative two. Okay, in order to find the equation of the right bisector, so I need to find the equation of the line that bisects that at a 90 degree angle. Okay, um, first thing I'm going to do, I want to figure out the slope of this perpendicular line. In order to do that, I need to figure out the slope of AB and then take the negative reciprocal of it. So slope of AB, I know that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, so negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. Over x2 minus x1, 3 minus 1 is 2. That gives me a slope of negative 3. My perpendicular slope, okay, that's the short form for that. Um, I know this line is perpendicular to AB. I can find the perpendicular slope just by taking the negative reciprocal of um, the slope of AB. Slope of AB is negative 3 over 1. Negative reciprocal is a fancy way of saying flip it and change the sign. So this becomes positive 1 over 3. Okay, so I have the slope of this line now. If I find a point on that line, I'll be able to write it in y equals mx plus b form. I'll be able to solve for the y-intercept if I figure out a point on this line. I know it goes to the midpoint of AB, so let's find the midpoint of AB. That's no problem. We know how to find the midpoint. And to get the x-coordinate of the midpoint, let's take the, the average of the x-coordinates. So 1 plus 3 is 4, divided by 2 is 2. To find the y-coordinate of the midpoint, I take the average of the y-coordinates. So add them and divide by 2. 4 plus negative 2 is 2, divided by 2 is 1. I now have the midpoint. Okay, So I'm, I'm almost ready to write the equation of this line. I have my slope. I have an x and a y-coordinate. So I can write, um, I know y equals 1 over 3 x plus b. I know an x and a y-coordinate on the line, so I can plug in for x and y. y equals 1 over 3, 2 plus b. I'm going to be working with fractions with this question a little bit, but that's fine. Um, 1 equals 2 over 3 plus b. Um, I'm going to get a common denominator here, so I'm going to make the 1 change that into 3 over 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so that's equivalent. I'm going to bring the 2 over 3 to the other side, minus 2 over 3, so I can isolate b. And that gives me 1 over 3 is equal to b. I can now write the equation of my line. y equals 1 over 3x plus 1 over 3. That's in y equals mx plus b form. 
and I'm all done. There's the right bisector of a line. Okay, last thing in this unit, and we work with circles. Remember the equation of a circle? The radius squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Okay? A circle is a set of all points that are the same distance from a fixed point, the center. Um, the radius is the distance from the center of the circle to any point on the circle. Okay? So, um, all the circles we work with in this um, unit are centered at the origin. So, if I want to write the equation of a circle with center 0, 0 and a radius of 3, so if r equals 3, and I know the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared, okay? If I know r equals 3, r squared is 9, so the equation of my circle, that's nice and easy, x squared plus y squared equals 9, okay? What if I go backwards? What if I give you the equation of the circle and ask you for the radius? So based on, I know the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared, okay? But where I see r squared, I see an 81, so I know r squared is equal to 81. That means that r must be equal to the square root of 81, which is 9. So my radius is 9. That was nice and easy as well, okay? Um, what if I just give you a point on the circle, okay? Um, so every point we know has an x and a y coordinate. Okay, if I want to find the, I know the radius squared of a circle is equal to x squared plus y squared. Okay, if I plug in, I have an x and y coordinate, and for x and y, I can solve for what r squared is equal to. r squared is equal to 8 squared plus negative 6 squared. r squared is equal to 64 plus 36, that gives me a nice number of 100. So r squared equals 100. I know my equation of my circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. I know what r squared is equal to. I can write my equation, x squared plus y squared equals 100. Nice and easy. There's the equation of my circle. Awesome. Last type of question you'll get with circles. Um, it'll ask you, is this point inside the circle x squared plus y squared equals 100? Okay? So all I have to do is see if this point is inside or outside of that circle. Um, just plug in my x and my y coordinates. Um, of this point and see if that is equal to 100, less than 100, or greater than 100. Okay, so negative 5 squared plus 9 squared, let's see if that's equal to 100. So 25 plus 81 equal to 100. Oh, 25 plus 81, um, that gives me 106. 106 is not equal to 100. Okay. If 106, if I got 100 equals 100, that would mean the point is on the circle. If I got um, something, if I got something less than 100, that would mean the point is inside the circle. But because 106 is greater than 100, that means that point negative 5 9 is outside the circle. Okay. And I believe that's it for unit one. Let's see how we did for time. 21 minutes. Oh, just a bit over. But we got through all of Unit 1, 21 minutes, not bad. Make sure you use this video um, just as a quick reminder of what's in the chapter, not as your sole study aid for the test, okay? Um, wherever you find, found yourself getting lost, uh, make sure you go back in your notes and um, go through that section, practice more of those questions. Um, and also in your um, review package, make sure you do the questions on that section as well. All right, so next video, we'll go through Unit 2, which is quadratics.